I found it sort of heartwarming today to see all the technology that's out there, and I think I'm going to go on to a bit about that uh, in a minute, not too much about the different rare breeds that we've done, but the technology that's out there that we can use to preserve these rare breeds in the future um, for, for future generations. Um, so, yeah, it's what this technology, what you, we've used, and how it can aid the rare breed survival trust that sort of moving forward. And I think that's some of the things we've got to be looking at. But also, I think it's quite interesting to look at the past. And uh, this video was uh, I've had for, for a while now. This is how we actually used to collect off stallions many, many years ago. This is back in the 1930s. So uh, there was no real AVs then or artificial vaginas. It was literally at the, the, the stallion cover the mare. Um, you can see good health and safety stocks, obviously, and everything being adhered to here. Um, and this is breeding, I think, uh, horses for the, for, for the army. And he literally just used to go in and scoop the semen out, stick it in a jar, and then go and AI him there. So it's a, a pretty of a crude way. Luckily, nowadays, we've, we're using much better technology. And there you have it. So there's, there's more than one way of uh, collecting off uh, these horses. And you think out there, you've got a bad job. You know, we're collecting off these stallions, collecting off these animals. Well, you bear in mind for this chap here. Yeah. <laughs> so ever, whenever you think you're having a bad day, you, you got to, and I think this stallion says it all. You think, I think he's looking at this saying, you really think I'm going to jump on there? Uh, but again, luckily, I think in the bovine world, you, they used to do that a bit as well, I think, in these crates. Were, but, uh, but yeah, he's a braver man than me, I must admit. So moving on to sort of the other technology that we, we're using now, there's only, we've only got a limited amount of time, so I'm only going to touch on a, a couple of them. But uh, the advanced reproduction or assisted um, the sort of advanced processing techniques that are out there, we're going to have a quick chat about them. Freezing extenders, I'm not going to talk about that. I think that plays a big, big part in our future. We've changed our freezing extenders. It's made us, yes, we, we've done it for years, but it makes us look good. We can freeze more animals than ever we've done before. We're actually going to take on a PhD student next year, solely looking at uh, freezing extenders and how we can make these freezing extenders better across all species, not just uh, the equine. Epidinimal sperm I'll be talking about. It, Edward's talked about ICSI and the involvement and how that can help with the rare breeds as well. Embryo transfer, that's been going for quite some time now and that's been working well with the Suffolks. Uh, oocyte transfer, semen sexing and obviously there's cloning out there as well. So the one bit I'm touching on is the seminal plasma. And We've actually, here we are saying we're giving something back to the rare breeds. We've actually learned stuff from the rare breeds as well. And, and we had, I think, four Suffolk stallions came in as, at once. And we were seeing a problem when we were getting the stallions collecting from the collection area. As soon as the semen was coming into the lab, it was dying off very, very quickly. And when you, ever, you look at semen, you usually can tell what's wrong with it by just looking at it. And it was getting this like toxic shot from the seminal plasma. So we started to add extender into the bottle. So as soon as the stallion ejaculated, it was mixed with this extender. And we suddenly saw that the semen was actually lasting a lot longer. And now this technique we can do on nearly every single collection right across the board. Because we find that some stallions it does work on, but some it just improves by 1% or 2%. And I always think whatever you do in the lab, it's amazing. At the end of it, whatever you start, whether you wash the stallion's penis off beforehand or not, right the way through, collectively, it can make a huge difference at the end. So getting that stallion seems to freeze. So it's looking at the whole. So this is what we learned from the Suffolk Punch. punch. And uh, you know, this is a normal ejaculate, and this is a ejaculate with a high volume of seminal plasma. You can see it's very weak, and this is quite toxic to the semen. So that's all we did was add something to it. So the other bit I was going to talk about was epidinimal sperm extraction. This is something we've been doing for quite a few years, but it's been around for a long time. Back in sort of 1955, the first ever frozen semen from an equine was actually done by this method. It was through epididymal sperm extraction. Um, we've been doing this maybe now for oh, 10 years now, really from a trauma case. A stallion came to say, or somebody rang us up and said, can we actually freeze uh, from a stallion that's just suddenly passed away because they haven't got any valuable lines. So we sent the testicles into us and uh, the resulting was this foal about two, two or three years later. Um, it's a, I think this is something we should be looking at for the rare breeds. If you suddenly have a rare breed that suddenly dies for one reason, you don't have it in the gene bank. If you can get the testicles to a place 
they can actually sometimes, even up to 48 hours old after the animal's passed away, we can actually reserve those genetic lines. And I think we did one the other day, didn't we, Ruth? I think we got 20 odd doses from that animal, and it's worked really well. And usually, as long as the animal hasn't been sick for a long time, the, the success rates are very, very good. So we can, the amount you get for an animal can be anything from 10 to 60 insemination doses. So it's uh, depending on the age and the size of the animal. But we went one step further, we had another phone call uh, a while ago, uh, a few years ago, of a farmer up in Scotland, and he said that my, my bull's just died, I think he paid 16,000 guineas, can you do the same to save this bull? So I said, well, have a go, I mean, Google's brilliant, isn't it? I just went on Google, looked at the anatomy of a uh, bull's testicles and, and rang up Cogent, and they gave me a bit of a hand, they'd never done it. So I thought, oh, I'll give it a go, and uh, heard nothing from, the seam was about 20% post-thaw, uh, I think I put a lot more in straw than I should have, but anyway, packed it off back up to Scotland. Didn't hear anything for a while, and then I got a phone call saying, um, you're not going to believe this, but we've got three calves on the ground, and the press have got hold of it, and um, you've actually made it on the front page of the sun. So, <laughs> so um, which is always great, it's been a great sort of story for, for years. And, um, so. Uh, you can imagine the Sun used every expletive you can think of, but it was just music to their ears. Obviously, there was no Brexit or anything else going on at that time. Cause, um, so it was, a, it was a great, great story. But I think the epidemic has got a lot more semen harvesting, has got a lot to offer. We're working, Gabby's here from Chester Zoo here at the moment, and uh, we, we've been doing work closely with them uh, over the years, how we can preserve the, the, the rare breeds. I went to the National uh, Preservation Conference, I think, at Chester, Zoo, Chester last year, and I was outstanding. It's all the zoos from all over the world came to it. And I think we can learn from all their techniques that they're doing, as well as, as well what we're doing. 25,000 species are on the border, border of being extinction. I was amazed by that. And the work they're doing at Chester and Whipsnape and other zoos to preserve these, and the technology that they're using, I think we can learn an awful lot from it. So I think that's just a, an, another angle. But uh, again, we're looking into, by natural selection or natural wastage, we're looking to see how we can preserve these other bear animals as well when they naturally die, um, preserving their semen through epididymal harvesting as, as, as well. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much.